Hello. Hello! Welcome to Explore Home and Pete. My name's Matt. And I'm Izzy. And today we are at the Natural History Museum and Pitt Rivers Museum in Oxford City Centre. Really excited to be here. Yeah, really excited. I haven't been here since I was like a teenager yeah. or a child. As always, we're here to find out what it's like if you should go and if it's worth the ticket price. Incidentally, this place is free to get in, so we can't, we can't lose, yeah, we can't, can't lose. lose. Also here to see what it's like for kind of families as well. We have got the baby with us in a pram, so we'll see what it's like. Right, are you ready to go? Let's go. Just walking in, spotted this sign here. If you've got buggies, there's an accessible entrance. So down the path to the right of the main entrance. Slightly less glamorous route in. I know, I think it's because we've been so used to going into old buildings like, without a child that it's weird taking like, the accessible route. I gotta say, this is everything you want a natural history museum to be, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's oldie worldy, it's a beautiful building. It's your first time here. Amazing. I mean, you just look around. We've got a T-Rex, this amazing, amazing ceiling. There's a big iguana down here and loads of exhibition spaces all around you showing absolutely everything. Every animal you could ever imagine. They've even got a dodo over here. Are you trying to show her like dinosaur bones? Yeah. Try and get her into it. Pachycephalosaurus. Can you say that? No. no. <laughs> oh well. Do you like the butterflies? Yeah, she yeah. likes the colours. It's very clever how you got the red, the orange, the yellow, the green too as well. Like presenter. They've got the brown and black bears here and amazingly for a museum you're allowed to touch them. You can stroke them. Yeah. It's an amazing thing to do. You just you'd obviously never get that close to a brown or black bear in real life. But so, Really, go, it? Yeah, something a bit different from a museum. It's so used to just, please do not touch everywhere. Obviously, there are things in here that you can't touch, but these, it specifically says, please try it. Yeah, I just heard a little girl say, I really like it here, but it's a shame everything's dead. And you're like, well, yeah, otherwise it would be a zoo, I suppose. Yeah, but she's got a point, she's got a point. Just everywhere you look, there's something so interesting, something you've never seen before. So they've got this armadillo here, yeah. all kind of, balled up like it would do if it was trying to protect itself but you can just see how perfectly it all fits yeah. together yeah. amazing they've got some beautiful taxidermy here i guess that's what you call it but almost all set up in little displays recreating sort of life so you've got here you've got a golden oriole feeding its chicks here you've got a bumblebee going to a military orchid Got a yellow belly toad escaping a grass snake. Well, it's amazingly well done, beautifully lit. This must be one of the most photographed spots in the museum. This collection of skeletons of kind of modern mammals. We've got various things polar bear, uh, a common pig. We've then got giraffes and deer, and there's a big elephant right at the back over there. It is amazing, really effective, particularly with all this amazing architecture around it. One thing you don't notice so much is because we've got all of these huge, great big skeletons and, and big exhibition cabinets in the middle. There's all of these tiny cabinets around the edge with absolutely amazing fossils. A lot of them from the local kind of Oxfordshire area. Some of these just get completely kind of missed. Here's another shot of us realising quite how big an animal is in yes. real life. This is a bluefin tuna and it must be two metres long. But what it says on the sign is they actually go to 3.5 metres long. So almost double this. It is absolutely massive. Apparently have to swim their entire lives. They can't stop because they, they have to kind of keep going to, to breathe and to, to feed and to stop them sinking. They're just constantly on the go. Always learning. <laughs> my favourite one, one of if not my favourite dinosaur growing up as a kid, a triceratops. This one's 66 million Look years it. old. It's huge. Oh, it's just amazing. You see all the where all the veins and things were in its skin. It doesn't just, like look real. No, it doesn't. We were just walking along this corridor, sort of around the outside of the ground floor. We noticed there's all of these pillars 
behind you here and they run all the way down the corridor but every single one is a different stone a different type of stone and it tells you at the bottom what type of stone they are again so many little things like that would just go completely unnoticed if you're looking at the t-rexes and you're looking at all the skeletons of the giraffes and the elephants it's amazing little things everywhere in this museum right let's go and have a look in the pit rivers collection This Pitt Rivers Museum is amazing. It's mind boggling, all these sort of cabinets and everything. But it is very much linked to kind of colonial Britain and our kind of need to classify and collect everything from all over the world. So there are things from Africa, Asia, all over the world just collected into one space in all of these cabinets. And it is incredible to see it all together and here they've got a cabinet with lutes flutes uh, trumpets drums bells rattles and xylophones free reed instruments <laughs> it was again as if the natural history museum wasn't enough to look at this place is on a whole other level it's like going into an antique shop and like looking at all it's interesting things. There's like so many weird and wonderful things here. Yeah. It's incredible. So they have a load of clothing here from kind of Canada and Alaska. But they've got these Parker jackets made from seal intestine. And I think this sort of thing just sums up the Pitt Rivers Museum in that it is just amazing the stuff they have from all over the world, these oddities and collections. So that's our trip over to the Natural History Museum in Oxford. What did you think? Yeah. I mean, it's good, it's free, it's Oxford. There's yeah. so much history here and it's just an amazing building. Uh, it is, there is <laughs> so much to see and do here. It is absolutely incredible that all of that entertainment for your family is completely for free. With both the Natural History Museum with all the dinosaurs and animals and uh, geology stuff. And then you've got that Pitt Rivers collection of just stuff from all over the world, whether it was baskets or pottery or weapons samurai suits it was just mind-boggling the amount of stuff in there really really good don't miss out on that pit rivers collection if you come here because it's kind of tucked at the back through a little archway and then just opens up in front of you absolutely amazing what do you think of the cafe i mean it's small considering yeah. if you went on a weekend like we have it's very busy <laughs> it is yeah cafe's not massive food was a limited limited menu but it actually looked nice we just had like a soup and some bread um, and some drinks and it was nice and pretty good value really um, the little shop as well that was yeah, quite nice stuff. yeah that was good um, just accessibility because it's an older building you have to like take the long way around yeah lifts tram. lifts are only in certain places so you do have to do a lot of backwards and forth to get in and out of the lifts that's one only thing but with that being said we're off home. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.